All right, guys, I'm gonna be a little bit all over the place right now. Um, a couple of things that I think impact your business um, in a professional aspect is uh, appearance across the board. Um, we'll start with dress code, whether you have one or not. Uh, for me, personally, my opinion is uh, it matters. Um, I, I try to always wear some sort of khaki pant. Um, if it's not pants, I try to wear khaki shorts. The only time I do not is when it is excessively hot and uh, well, my customers understand. I wanna, I wanna be as cool as I possibly can. Um, I got a long day ahead of me. If it's gonna be a heat index of 100, 110, they get it. Um, but outside of that, I always try to wear something. I've got business shirts printed. Um, I've got white ones. I've got gray sleeveless and I've got gray uh, t-shirts with sleeves. If I don't wear one of those, I always wear a lawn care shirt. This is uh, Skag. Um, you know, if, if I'm out doing lawnmower work, I'm wearing something that's lawnmower related, if it's not my actual business shirt. Uh, and nine times out of 10, or 19 times out of 20, I will wear a lawn care shirt. Once in a while, I will I will wear one of these. I always wear a hat that is lawn care related. Uh, well, I'm a hat guy, I always wear a hat. I'm bald, so I don't wanna get sunburned. Um, so I always wear a skag hat or a still hat <coughs> or echo or uh, any of the mo Ferris. I, I own a Ferris, so I'll wear a Ferris hat from time to time. Um, but, you know, it's the professional part of it. You're showing up, you're ready for work, you look like the part. Uh, I try to wear boots most of the time. Um, again, the only times I don't is when it's excessively hot, I'll throw on a pair of low top tennis shoes. Um, I'll wear those. Let's talk about uh, your equipment. Obviously it gets dirty. It gets very dirty when you're out working it and when you're in the crunch in the spring and the grass is wet and it's just sticking to everything. Uh, you're running through puddles and you're splashing mud all over. Your mowers are going to show. They're going to show the dirt. They're going to show the work. That's fine. Your customers get that. And in some regards, it, it probably looks good because it's showing the fact that you're out hustling, you're working. Uh, your customers are thinking, wow, he must have a lot of business, you know, and it makes them feel good about hiring you and along with the work that you do on their property. Uh, but when you get the chance, it's important to, to wash the mowers, keep them clean, blow them off in between yards. Uh, I'm not somebody who will wash my mowers religiously, like every week, because in my opinion, you're doing more harm to the mower than you are good. There's too many bearings in the equipment, too many parts that uh, you don't want to get water into. Um, so I, I, I really try to keep them blown off. And maybe every other month, if I start noticing that they're getting really marked up, stained, or uh, grass is you know, sticking to it all over the place. The deck's starting to turn green instead of staying the color that it's painted by the manufacturer. Uh, I will pressure wash it. I, uh, I try to keep my wand off of the belts, off of the bearings, off of all the plugs and connections on the engine. I make sure, definitely make sure it's cool before you, uh, you put water to it. But, uh, you got it. Yeah, there's just areas on the mowers that you got to be careful. You don't want to get too much water in. Um, I, I'm not one that believes in press, uh, pressure washing the underneath of the deck unless it's absolutely necessary. Um, I, I, I'm an advocate for uh, putty knives, scrapers. Uh, I will get underneath my deck every day. 
Uh, and in, the, and in the, the growing part of the season when, well, right now we've gotten so much rain, this grass is holding moisture whether it's dry or not. So the underneath of the deck is loading up. <coughs> I will climb under there as many times during the day as I have to and scrape that deck. I'll drive it up on the ramp on my trailer and scrape it and then I'll back down, grab my shovel, scoop it all up, throw it in my bed. Uh, obviously you never want to leave the mess for your, your customers to have to deal with. Uh, your trucks and your trailers. Uh, I'll turn the camera. Blake at B&B Lawn Care, he made a, a great point. It's something that I've always done, but uh, keep them clean. He's got a 20-foot rule, 30-foot rule, whatever whatever it was Blake said. But uh, I mean that is uh, that's that's just awesome. If you're pulling up in a truck in a trailer that um, the customer sees you pull up and you don't look like you take care of anything then they're thinking, well, does he take care of his, his mowers? Are the blades sharp? Is the deck scraped? Are the belts good? The bearings good? Is he going to make it next week? I mean, as, as dumb as that sounds, believe me, it, without them even thinking about it, I mean, it may not even cross their mind, but, but subliminally or in the back of their mind, <laughs> they're, they're thinking these things. Maybe they don't even realize it. Um, and then they see the neighbor, you know, he's got a lawn care company that pulls up and uh, they're doing just as good a job as you or almost as good a job as you or better than you and, and they're keeping their stuff nice and tidy and clean. Come to work shaving. Make sure you're clean shaved. Present yourself in a business manner, professional. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Um, I always greet my customers if they're out in the yard or if they pull up, give them a wave, a smile. If uh, their garbage cans are at the end of the driveway and I'm showing up to mow, I check it. Has it been emptied? Well, I gotta mow around it, so I gotta move it. I'll just drag it up to the garage, put it up by the garage door. They're gonna think, well, that, that was pretty nice. He didn't have to do that. But I'm off the mower anyways. It's gonna, what is it gonna take? 10 seconds to walk their garbage can up the driveway and put it up by their mailbox or by their uh, garage door. Um, balls in the yard, uh, toys, things like that. You're mowing around the stuff. I mean, none of us want to have to pick it up, move it. Pick it up, move it anyways. It's little things that make a, a big difference. Um, put it in a nice, neat pile. You know, if they got a pool and there's stuff in the yard from the pool. Put it in a nice neat pile by their pool. A, either they'll appreciate it, or B, they'll think, well, man, I guess we ought to start picking up after ourselves when we're done using the pool. They'll get on the kids. Guys, pick up your rafts, pick up your volleyballs, go get your mitt out of the yard. The long guy's gonna be here and he doesn't wanna run it over. Or, or we don't want him to have to you know, move that stuff. Um, it's kind of give and take, but it's showing professionalism. It's showing the customers that you care about them. The last thing they want to think is that they're just a number. Okay? They don't, they don't want to think that uh, they're number 23 out of 140 yards that you do. They want to think that you know them as Carol or Dave or Mr. Jones or, you know, uh, be familiar with them. But don't, don't make them think that they're just a number to you, a paycheck or you know, a, a, a random property. <coughs> Have that connection as much as it can be. And I always call my customers Mr. or Mrs. by their last name unless they come out at some point and I'm talking with them and they say, Chris, you don't have to call me Mr. Phillips, okay? You can call me Mark or you can call me Janice. Um, once they make that uh, personal connection, then remember their name and call them, address them by their name, how they ask you to address them.
because that's key right there. If if they're giving you permission to call you by their call them by their first name, then they are making a personal connection with you. That is a step closer than just business. Um, if you have that uh, rapport with your customers, where they want you to call them by their first name or or hey, come on over here, man, sit down, let's have let's have you want to pop. Um, those are the those are the rapports that you want. That's the type of connection that you want with your customers. But the fact that I had that personal connection with him through conversations, through waving, uh, you know, if he's out there and he's moving something around, jump off the motor, and give him a hand, things like that. Um, you know, it could be anything, but. Uh, Having that rapport with your customers is fantastic, and it only takes a minute, really. It, it, it doesn't have to be an hour-long conversation. Sometimes it can be. You know, if your route's almost done, or you're ahead in the week, take that little bit of time. Stand there and, and BS with your with your customer. Sometimes they really like that. Sometimes they need to vent about something. I've had, I've had uh, guys stand in the yard and just gripe about their wife, or uh, tell me what's going on at work. I don't need to know any of that. But, you know, I'm building rapport with my customers, and uh, I'll tell you what, they really, they really like it. They really do. Uh, they're going to say that they're going to call you up and say, hey, let's go get a beer sometime. But for the most part, people aren't that bad. And you know, they kind of want to know who's on their, on their property when they're not at home. They want to get to know you a little bit. They want to know about your family. About your kids, I have customers that are asking me about, uh, hey, how's baseball going with uh, your little one, or how's uh, football going with the other one, or uh, you know, softball, or, or volleyball, or basketball, or cheerleading. I mean, most of my customers know that I'm a family man. And, uh, you know, my we've got five kids, and they know that they're active, and uh, they want to know. They, they genuinely care and they will they will flag me down in the yard and walk up to me on the mower and start a conversation with me you know hey how's the youngest one how's the middle one how's the oldest one you know are they excited about going back to school and that is awesome uh, no I don't really want to get roped into conversations while I'm working because it slows me down but I would choose to spend that little bit of time talking with my customers, building that rapport, that personal connection that is going to, when they get a knock on the door by ABC123 Lawn Care, and uh, hey, you know what? We're running a promotion, we're a new lawn care company, or we've been in town for 20 years, or we've been in a town, you know, five miles over for 20 years, and we're trying to work our way this way. We're running a promotion, we'll beat anybody's cost. And that's kind of how it is around here sometimes. Uh, I want my customers to say, you know what? We've been with Chris for uh, 10 years, 15 years, what have you. And uh, he's always here. He's doing a good job. Uh, we know him. We know his family. We see him at the store. We shop at the same places. Uh, he takes care of his equipment, this and that. We're going to stick with Chris. Um, I don't want to get beat out by a dollar. And that's, that's the way that this world's kind of coming down to, and uh, that's not how I want to do business. I want to have an upfront, transparent, professional business that my customers can rely on and uh, brag about to their neighbors or to their coworkers and uh, feel confident when they, when they give one of my business cards to their, their coworker or their neighbor Hey, this is the guy that's been mowing my grass for 10 years or for 15 years. He's here every week. He takes care of his equipment. He's got a nice truck. He's got a nice trailer. He's got nice mowers. Um, he's trustworthy. I can go to work. I can be on vacation. I don't have to worry about this guy.